We've been looking for a miracle. We're both close to $300,000 in debt. If our situation does not improve, our family will be destroyed. The expertise I bring is to get them out of that financial hole they find themselves in. Too many people in America just say, it's never going to happen to me. What do you have in savings? Zero. We don't save. Not a penny. That's why I'm here. I want to help alleviate that pain. But when I go in there, I don't know how bad this is going to be. Where's the money going? Are you kidding me? Sometimes it's about bad decision making. How is an executive assistant driving a $100,000 car? Sometimes it's about poor habits. This isn't an office, it's a junk pile. You need a kick in the ass and I'm here to give it to you. I'm gonna teach you how to run this family like a business. But it's not gonna be comfortable. You gotta pay the price, man. You gotta crawl through the glass. I'm not your giving TV up a TV. is more important than your kids. That's up. I'm not giving up my car. Either you want to take my house right. or you don't. No matter how hard I bust my ass, I'm still not able to get ahead. Everything is at stake right now. This is worse than rock bottom. I don't want to be in debt no more. I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm done. The show's all about how to make smart decisions. If they know how to manage their money, they can change their financial destiny. I believe in you. I know you can do it. That's huge. I'm super proud of you. Awesome. Life or Dead, new series, begins Sunday, March 13th at 10, after Bar Rescue on Spike. All right, so that's it. We're here with the man himself, Mr. Sales Trainer Extraordinaire, Mr. Victor Antonio. Victor, it's great to see you. Thank you for having me. Elbow bump. Man. Elbow. Yes. Thanks for coming. Long oh, distance. Right yes. there. You guys, I, I, I've known Victor for a long time, and I, I've worked as a speaker, you know, with sales trainers, the best of the best, starting with, you know, Larry Wilson back in the old days, right? Oh, that's old school right yeah, there. Yeah, that's old school, man. I mean, he was just uh, the, the best. And uh, I'll tell you, I've never seen anyone train salespeople better around the world than Victor Antonio. So I've been trying to get him on that's the show for a long time. <laughs> that's a violation right there. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. That's a, yeah, exactly. Get I back in emotional. your corner. I got emotional right there. So <laughs> well, we're just really excited to have you, man. Thanks for coming. We Thank know you you've been in, in all over the world, and you just got back again. From, yeah. Every time I talk to you, you're in Oman I, I, or some, Well, you know, with, this, with this pandemic, Australia. well, now I'm at home. And I'm exactly. at, so it's really yeah. nice. So I just yeah. got back from the Middle East. We did uh, Jordan, Oman. Uh, wow. So it, it's good to be back. And I think Bell Glade, Florida. Did that you? That's where I was. Well, that, that's pretty foreign down there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in well, the lower, uh, the lower markets. <laughs> I'm, by the way, I'm enjoying this. I mean, it's it's I, people. When I say that, people take it wrong. I'm enjoying being able to stay at home. I think you know the, this this pandemic. If we try to find the silver lining, you know, the, the, the world's been put on pause giving us time to reflect, retool, redirect, whatever it may be. And so hopefully we'll come out the other side, so. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. No doubt about it. Well, you know, um, I think one of the things that's important for our, our, our guests to know today is that we, you know, we try and bring people on our show that, that have lots to contribute maybe to their lives, because people will be listening to this with their teams, watching mm -hmm. it live. They'll be taking a jog or a walk and listen to the podcast of it. And, and I think one of the things that obviously they saw in the trailer video, mm -hmm. if they're watching, is that uh, you had your own TV show. That's a pretty powerful thing. Tell us about that it's a little bit. A big show, too. Yeah, yeah, it's a big show. Uh, yeah. But before I got on the show, I just have to say this, because and Andy's off screen here, so he's there. I just love all your content, all your collaterals, all your material, how you brought that all together. Again, taking a very complex topic, simplifying it for people. Beautiful book. I love it, man. So well done, well, man. Thank that's you. exceptionally thank you. well done. So that's, I mean, if, yeah. 
We have, proud we, that you we, have these guys representing your, your we brand. We have a great team. We have yeah. a secret weapon called Andy yeah. Horner and the Outstanding Team. Yeah, that's, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. He's yeah. our secret weapon for exactly, sure. What's, yeah. what's, what's funny, because one of the biggest barriers to getting into business is really you know, building that brand and image up and having the collaterals by, everything, by I mean, the website, the videos, and all that. All that stuff's handed to you already branded like this in such an exceptional way. Yeah. Uh, anyway, high five, bam. It's hard to miss. Okay. Oh, thanks. It is hard to miss, yeah. It's a, when the first, I walked in, and I'm like, you saw my face when I walked in. I'm like, wow, this is beautiful, man. Thank so, you. Thank well you. done, man. Thanks. Now, back to the show. So, here's what <laughs> happened. So, uh, they called out to me, and uh, so a little background about myself. So, you know, so a little ADHD, so just bear with me. So, my family's originally from Puerto Rico. So, para mi gente en español, muy bien, estoy aquí. And so, you know, they came to the U.S. in the late 50s, and so my parents didn't speak English. My father had a third-grade education. My, father had, my mother had a fifth-grade education. We were poor, 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 poor. We were raised by the Cabrini Green Housing Projects, food stamps, government cheese, powdered milk. My mother said, go to school, get the education, get the J-O-B. Got an engineering degree, got an MBA, was in corporate America, making big money, loved what I was doing. And then one day, May 9, 2001, 3.48 p.m., if I can be exact, I decided to go from small e to big E, right? Which is to really do my own thing and just pursue my own passion. And so it's funny because that was one of the toughest decisions I've ever had to make is to, you know, at that time I was president of sales and marketing. It was a $420 million company. Uh, my base salary at the time was like 250000 This is not bragging. This is just establishing a framework here. And commissions on top of that, stock options. And I was really afraid to go out on my own. You know, and I remember I told my wife, I said, you know, I just can't do it. I had what I call this quiet discontent. You know what I mean? Well, you just can't, I can't do this anymore. And my wife's like, I'm with you. You know, she's like, I'm with you, right? Do your thing. So May 9, 2001, I quit, right? So June, I really started marketing myself. At the end of the year, I made a whopping $17,000. Mm. And at that point, you're like, whoa. And my wife was like, okay, uh, I support you. And I noticed, I noticed that the, the fist was down here. Right? It wasn't yeah. as high yeah. as this. And I realized, and this is why I, you know, I bring it back to marketing. I'll talk about the show. I bring it back to marketing because I realized at the end of the day, no matter what business you're in, you're in the marketing business first. Yeah. Right. And how people perceive you makes all the difference in the world. That said, I started speaking, started doing videos. Uh, I remember I was motivated by Gary Vaynerchuk's book, I think it was called Crush It, mm. where he was about video, video, video. You're all in on video, right? So I was like, I ah, pushed the chips in all on video. And that's how they found me. They were searching online for a host for this TV show uh, uh, called Life or Debt. And what they wanted was a host who can come in here, come in and really dissect a family, take apart their finances, show them some tough love. And that's how they found me and that's how I got on the show. And it was, it was quite the experience. I was, it, was, I, it, was, it was scary to go into people's personal lives. And this, doing this here with you guys is easy for me because... Uh, the line that we always use in the show is 75% of American families are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, let that one hit bottom for a second. 75% yeah. are living paycheck to paycheck, which means as we go through this pandemic, you know they're being impacted already. They're only one paycheck away from financial disaster. Yeah. And I think it was Forbes magazine about a couple of years ago. Don't know if it's still true. Ho hopefully it's not, but I think it still is, is that 61% of people had like only $1,000 or less in their savings account. And so the whole show was about how do you first go in there, do the assessment? That was the process. So the structure of the show, I spend five days with the family. First day, assess. Like, what the is going on? Day two is the biggest aha moment for me is that, you know, we as motivators, right, go, come on, man, you can do it. I know you can. I know you can. And you right. think, okay, they'll get it. You explain it logically, rationally. Here's what you need to do. Uh. But it wasn't, we realized, until you impacted them emotionally by taking something away from them that they've really reacted. Like so, you used to take their cars away. Yeah, I took, ca I, I took cars, cars away. I saw, they used to attack you. Yeah, I yeah. was afraid for you at yeah, some yeah. shows. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. telling you on the pre-show is that by the, by the second or third episode, I think third episode, fourth, one of those, they had a bodyguard on set because every, you know, the husbands really wanted to kill me. There were a yeah. couple of wives that wanted to kill me and I think they could have kicked my butt. So, you know, I had the bodyguard there, but it was really interesting. And then the premise is we give them all the tools and resources, then we come back in 90 days to see how they're doing. Wow, that's yep. great. Well, what we did in our book is we not only pointed out how big the problem is, but we pointed out how big the solutions can be. And it's not a solution, it's a stream of them Correct. that we call our seven <laughs> milestones. So what we do is, is start off with saying the thing you're really missing first is any perspective on this. So you need a financial education. If you don't understand the basics of this, we don't want to make you a PhD. <laughs> we want you to be able to kind of understand some of the terms and, and what maybe some of the impact of this is. And, 
And then once you see the, the seven milestones, and then we, we, we fill each one in with, yep. with a couple little small sentences that help you to see that, yeah, that's an area I better spend some focus on. Now, all of this you can do yourself. Mm -hmm. or all of this you could do through a financial professional that you already have. Right. But most of the time, they don't trust themselves right. and either don't trust or don't like the one they have done anything, any parts through. So they're really looking for a new relationship of trust, which is where we can come in. That's not, right. that's not really why we're doing this because mm -hmm. it's education-based. But at the end of the day, we're there if they, if they need us. And so once you go through these milestones, you can see number four is debt management. And I thought it was just fascinating listening to the perspective of how you did the show. I watched some of your stuff online and... And I, I think it's amazing that, the, first of all, that has to be in there. You can't just be crazy on debt mm -hmm. and have your finances work out in the end. Right. And, and so we've got some, some things we do. And, and in our book, we've got a, a section on debt management. It's only two pages, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a good two pages. And right. as you talk to your financial professional, you can get in a conversation with them and, and say, okay, now, now what can I do with this? Or, or here's my credit cards. And right. sometimes what actually upsets people about credit cards isn't the debt. <laughs> it isn't the interest they're going to be charged over the whole time. It's the disparity and the ripoff of what the bank pays you on your savings sure. and what they earn on your credit card and how, how quick their money doubles versus how quick your money doubles. Yeah. 800 years versus four years. Yes. It's so, I mean, it just makes you mad. Yeah. But, and, but, but what I always said to family was, don't be mad at them. Yeah. Because they outmaneuvered you. Be mad at yourself for not taking action. Yeah. You know, if you think about this financial literacy world, you know, what, what is our job as, as, as disciples of financial intelligence, right? And that is, our job is to raise their certainty that they can do it and reduce their anxiety because they're, they're scared. Everybody right, wants right. to get out of debt, you know, manage their money right, but they're scared they don't know, as you sure. were pointing out. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think it's yeah. cool that, you know, for, for, like we say in the book there, that some, for some people it's their greatest obstacle because they just keep doing these crazy debt things that suck up any capacity for growth they were going to have. And uh, part, of the, part of the book and part of the, the, the real the thing that Steve brought to it is stop being a sucker. Stop letting somebody do that to you and control your future. And yep. so I, I thought your show did a good job of pointing that out. Yeah, we, we had a lot of suckers on the show, if I can say it that way. But you know, <laughs> they were too happy. Yeah. No, what it was <laughs> is that people were making these financial decisions that were not mm -hmm. rational. Yeah. They were, you know, the, the, we had the lady with the Tesla. Yeah, I, I was, remember that. Yeah, show. administrative yeah. assistant. And when I said, car. yeah, why do you have a $100,000 car? Because I'm a car aficionado. She I'm a car was not happy with you on that yeah. show. Yeah, well, the, yeah. but, but <laughs> two things. One is that I go, okay, I'm, I'm a car enthusiast also but I'm not driving a Lamborghini, right? right? And second, the reason I didn't push back too hard on her was because her husband was the MMA fighter going under the name of <laughs> Irish Thug. Now, when you got a husband named Irish Thug, I'm not, yeah. yeah, I know. I was like, because I'm looking at my bodyguard going, I don't, I don't think you can take him. I just, you know what I mean? I'm scared yeah, right there. Exactly, yeah. But, but it was Keep interesting. The we'll work yeah. around it. What was it? Well, one, one, one of the most fascinating insights that I got from the show was that, you know, many went in, you know, debt because of conspicuous consumption, just buying, trying to keep up with the Joneses. But there were a couple of families that got into debt for something that was indirectly related to debt, uh, to, to consumption. And that is, they really wanted to get their kids into a better school. Mm. And I really sympathize with that because, you know, when you're raised in the hood, I realized I graduated third in my class in high school, yeah, for a moment, until I got to college. And then I realized that my public school education wasn't worth stuff yeah. compared to everybody else who had gone to private school. So I spent almost the first year doing pre-college courses just to catch up. And so I don't blame families for moving to these better, more affluent neighborhoods to get back into to get good schools. But what happened is they were double-income families. And you know what eventually happened? One of them lost their job. Sure. And then now they couldn't leave the neighborhood. You know, the kids were in schools. They had friends, relationships already. So they were, they were caught in the, into that debt trap. And that, that, to me, was one of the biggest sympathetic moments I've had in the show because it was like, I get it. It sucks. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's a tough thing. One of the things that, you, did you go to high school in Cabrini Green? It was by Cabrini Green. So oh. off of Ashland and Augusta. Right? Oh. William H. Wells High School, for those of you. That know. was a rough yeah. neighborhood. I remember we used to go through there. We, we wow. couldn't go there at night because I remember one time we were playing ball, basketball at, in Cabrini Green, right? Yeah, wow. Well. And all of a sudden we're playing basketball and, you know, the, the lights come on and it's dark. And then you hear, tick, tick, tick. And we're like, what the heck? And then you look around, and it was somebody shooting from the top because they wanted us to go home. So they were shooting at the concrete around the actual, and we're like, ah, time to go home. Oh, geez, and so yeah. it was like, what's yeah. the real? Was that? Yeah. So I, How about just go home? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, can you guys go home? So yeah. it was so very thought. interesting. It's, it's, 
You know, it's funny because, you know, when you're, when you're coming from a disadvantaged situation, <clears throat> your mindset is different. Uh, you'll find this funny. Okay, this, is, this is a funny story. Don't laugh too hard. But this is a true story. I'm not making this up. I remember living in the hood, right? And so we're in this bubble, what I call this hermetically sealed bubble, where it's pretty much, you know, the, the population there was ha pretty much 50% Hispanic, 50% black. And if you saw a Caucasian person, you're like, dude, Where'd you come from? Yeah. That type of thing, yeah. right? And I remember one day I saw this guy. It, it was a Caucasian man, white guy, in a suit. And I remember saying to myself, I don't know what he does, but I want to do what he does. Mm. And I remember that. And the second thing I thought is, dude, you're lost. You're going to get robbed. Yeah. You know, right. that was yeah. the second thing this I thought. This doesn't end well. I, I <laughs> so, figured that, yeah. And so what's yeah. interesting. Not Caprini Green. So here's what's that was interesting. A rough place. So I had an idea. I want to be the guy in a business suit. But my biggest aha moment, I think the, the shattering of the lies that we're told was when I got to college, uh, my father threatened me, if you don't go to college, you got to go work with us at the factory, at his factory. I'm like, uh, no, thank you. And so that's why I went to college. My motivation was pure money. You went to theory. ITT, didn't you? IIT. Oh, yeah, yeah. Illinois, IIT. Illinois yeah. Institute of Technology. Right, right, yeah, I was going to mix that and, yeah. so, and so I remember I get there my freshman year. I meet this guy named Mike. Mike is white. I'm not used to having a white friend, but Mike <laughs> is white. And I, one day I see Mike, and Mike starts telling me his story. And I realized, Mike is poor. And I say to Mike, I said, Mike, how could you be poor? You're white. You're white. <laughs> you know, he looked at me, he goes, Victor, are you an idiot? And I go, you know, it was, it's a stupid story, but that was like a moment for me. Because if you realize in the US, the poorest population in terms of number, not percentage, is white. If yeah, you look at who right. uses uh, uh, you know, uh, public assistance the most sure. in terms of number, it's whites, right. right? And we never hear these things, but that to me has nothing to do with race or anything right now. It has everything to do with what else have I been lied about? Right. Do you know what I mean? Sure. And that to me was the, the, I call that the shattering. Because then I started questioning things in general. And I think, you know, many of us don't go to that next level because we have, I, I call them invisible cages that we've stuck ourselves in or that people have created that put us in there and then we just can't get out. Which is why I love the fact that this program exists about money because I think that is a big cage. Huge. What role yeah. do you think people not learning this in school plays? I mean, you grow up and you just get out of school and you have no idea. Yeah. What, what do you think happened? It's, it's like taking a kid. Hey, you know, let me go throw you in the ocean right now. Never taught you how to swim or anything. Yeah, good luck. I right. mean, isn't it sad that some of the most essential basic things that we need to know? If you just look at money as one, just teaching financial literacy. But how about like food? You know, how to eat right, how to eat properly. We all, we all know that within neighborhoods, some of, the, some of the poorest decisions when it comes to food choices would impact your financial choices, health choices. It's all a big, giant, vicious circle. And so it's sad that our, our I think you talked a little bit, touched on a little bit, our educational system has just not, it's still set back during the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. It has not moved forward towards a knowledge-based, you know, society. And I think that has to change eventually. Well, they yeah. force you into calculus and algebra and things you'll never need, mm -hmm. and they skip some right of the here. basics, you know, and yeah. it's, it's, it, it really cripples them. I use, so, you know, and I, I, I'm always careful how I say this. People always, you know, I hear these, you know, I, I've heard Gary Vaynerchuk say it, some of these other guys, you know, you don't need a college education. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. You know what I mean? Because I don't, I don't believe in absolutes. Life is all grays, right? That's true. And so I got an electrical engineering degree. And I'm telling you right now, that thing has helped me make a lot of money, right? And so I'm, I'm like, I'm happy with my, what I did, my choices. But I know other people who chose, I don't know, a liberal arts degree who studied, I don't know, the life cycle of ants. Yeah, right. And you know, yeah. eh, that's not going to pay you a lot of money. Yeah. So it depends on what degree you get for the market at the time. Mm, sure. But to your point, though, Tom, is if you ask me, well, how much of that degree did you actually use? I would say I probably used maybe 20, 25%. But then I bounced that answer out with, what it did teach me was to think. Because you know you got to use a lot of critical thinking. And I think that's the class that's missing throughout your critical career. Thinking. Critical Definitely, thinking yeah. all the way through yeah. to really evaluate stuff like that. Well, may, this is really fascinating because you know you think about where you came from. You mm -hmm. don't know or didn't remember, don't have never heard of Caprini Green. Mm -hmm. That was That's literally the worst neighborhood yeah. that I have ever seen in the world. It was just. Yeah, you, know, you didn't even go near that place. We were told yeah. never, you know. So what made you think, or what made you believe that you could go from a beginning like that to where you, I mean, you speak all over the world, yeah. you're extremely successful, you know, TV show, yeah. you know, the whole bit. You're living a world-class life, without a question. You're, and you're a world-class performer, of course. But what made you believe you could do that? That's a big, you're a I long way from home. I know? didn't believe I could do it. How did you it was, do it It was then? pure fear. I, the thing is, I think sometimes we think, Fear is not a motivator. Oh, yes, it is. I, sure. I argue that. 
because it was the fear of working in the factory with my father because I saw what it did to my brother that drove me to get a college degree. The fear of not having a degree and graduating without something, oh, that was scary because I knew I couldn't be in a position. When we talk about money, we talk about debt, right? Oh, the fear of owing people money, making it and giving it away, that's fear. So I think it's how we perceive fear, but I think fear is one of the greatest motivators. But I also believe that, you know, the same thing can happen to two people. One person will go, all right, let's not do that again. You know, that wasn't a good idea. Let's figure this out, right? The other person will go, I'm an idiot. You know, I'm not good in anything. Yeah. I can't figure this out, you know. And I think that's the mindset. There's that, those are the two mindsets I always see. Some people are just like, yeah, I get it. That's, that sucks. Let's not do that again. But I think fear is one of the greatest motivators if used in a positive way. Wow, it's powerful stuff. Well, you know, well, we, we take people through some tips. We're not really trying to be debt counselors, but, mm -hmm. but we're trying to say, hey, you know, you, you go buy something before it's time. You know, you don't have the cash for it, so you want the thing, so you mm -hmm. go spend the money. Mm -hmm. And now you don't have enough money to save to make these other things that you right. now know about. So ours is more of a realization that he, here's the economics you have, right. and here's the realities of that. That's a good approach. We've got one other thing sure, we can yeah. add to it, though, because we have not just financial products and services. We've got a business opportunity. Right. So we can say to you, hey, if you need to make an extra 1000 or 2000 a month to save to make your future happen, whether it's retirement or paying for a wedding or, or, or sending your kids to college or whatever is important to you, we can bring you into this business, get you the license, and help you to, to go mm -hmm. teach others these same principles. To me, that, that's been such a... I'm so glad the person that found me didn't just make me a client, yep. that they gave me a chance to become a business owner and mm -hmm. escape from the accounting world I was heading into and, 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 and be able to do this. And so it's, it's interesting to me that, that the more you studied about debt, the more that told you that if you go make more, you can make yourself into a very successful person in life. And, and I love the fact that if you look at, and let me just be agnostic right now for a second, whether it's this model or any other model, right. the fact that there's a lot of companies out there that maybe not in the financial space, but in other spaces that have created systems that people can invest in at a small amount. I mean, think about it, the accessibility. Every time we want to get into a business, if you want to start your own business, it's always about barrier to entry, right? Yep. I don't have that much money to get a business. I mean, the barrier to entry to an opportunity like this one or another one, doesn't matter, right. is so low that the only excuse, that's why I was loving your presentation, because it's like, yeah, it's your mindset. It's fear, right? Yeah. You can freeze or you can focus on where you want to go. And I think that's what happens. People look at two opportunities. You right. can present the same thing. Two people will look at it differently. One will say, you know what? That's not a lot of money. I can do that. The other person will go, Nothing good ever happens to me. Well, there's a reason nothing good ever happens to you. Yeah. Because they're always yeah. negative, and that's, that's who they are. And I think, you know, too often in our lives, because I used to see it in the neighborhood. You remember that story? I, and I don't know the story correctly, but it's always about the bucket of blue crabs, I think. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you know what's, how's, how's it go? Leave the lid off the bucket. And yeah. They try to if, climb if, up. If, yeah. They pull, they if you pull one in there, it climbs out, yeah, right? right? But I'm you put a bucket. Yeah. I yeah. 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 But the it other one pulls good. each other down. Yeah. Because I remember, it, it, it's a funny story. When I first started speaking, you'll love this part. The, I remember I couldn't give away my speeches for free. Right, and I remember sure. I, I would tell people, you know, I was trying to give them away for free, and people were like, "Who are you?" But after a while, you did a couple of free ones. And I said, "I'm gonna charge 500 bucks," and my friends were like, "Dude, don't know you pay 500 bucks to speak. Are you an idiot? Right? Who, who, who would pay you 500 bucks for an hour?" And I'm like, "Somebody's gonna pay me 500 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Somebody out there, right, is gonna need my program on financial debt solutions. Somebody's gonna need me." And what happened is, 500 bucks, people started paying. I'm like, ah. So I'm a, I'm a pure capitalist. Pure, Raised to 1000 I'm like, I'm like a Milton Friedman Ayn Rand capitalist. I'm like, so I jack it up to about 1500 there's a, bucks. There's a mix there. Yeah, yeah, there's a beautiful mix. So you got that. So, so all of a sudden, I moved it up to 1500 It's like, nobody's going to pay you 1500 bucks, Victor. That is beyond yeah. ridiculous. And sure enough, and I keep moving it up. And people are like, nobody's going to pay you that. I'm like, yeah, you keep right. believing that. These are broke people that are giving you yeah, advice. This right. is what kills me. That's right. We listen to broke people. You know, yeah. I always tell, you know, when I look at somebody giving me advice, they better have more money yeah. or be doing something. And I'm not saying money is everything, but I, but I love people who always say, Victor, money doesn't buy you happiness. Shut up. Let me tell you what it does <laughs> buy you. Money buys you options. That's what it yeah. buys you. Sure. And you have the option to be happy or not. You know, put your kid in private school or not. You yeah. know, buy the car cash or not. You have options. Money guarantees you options. So when people minimize money, I think they don't understand real capitalism, real laissez-faire Adam Smith type of capitalism. It's a mistake. It really is. It is. A, lot of, a lot of us make but it. But yeah. to your point, Tom, the education system, which is why, which is why you know, content like this fills that gap. The question is, I ask you the question, if I can interview you, sure. how do you grab people's attention? 
because that's not what they're focused on. You know what? How do you grab their? How do you? How do you just grab them by the neck? Because that's this in the show. My, this in, might be why you needed a bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, when the show, I had him. You're captured. Where like, is okay. your bodyguard? Right? Yeah. This little Bruce Lee guy. Yeah, like, yeah. Running around here somewhere. Well, in the show, they gave us the families. They identified. So my job was just like, <clears throat> what the? You know? Right, yeah. Right, so, right, but right. you can't do that. So how do you? Wrangle well, these well, cats. Yeah. I, I think financial education in the past has been a big, thick textbook mm. that was mostly black and white and charts and graphs and things, yeah. and you didn't understand it. Pre Andy uh, Horner. Pre Andy Horner. That's what Horner. I call it. The pre Andy Horner era of and the it world. Just, it just didn't feel like it was something you could ever do. I mean, you're not a financial guy, most people aren't. And so they look at it and go, oh, no. I don't. And, then, and then, unfortunately, a lot of people in the financial industry have an economic incentive mm -hmm. to keep you in the dark yeah. because they'll make more. Yeah, the, okay. Whether it's the, the points or the above or below the table on your mortgage or car loan or... I can't or, tell you the number of times I've glazed over when somebody explains something to me. I go, I don't understand what you just said. Well, in, in insurance and investments in yeah. <laughs> and, and retirement, all these things are yeah. just hard to figure out if you don't know. And, right. and so you trust somebody and they, they may not ever take you into it. And they, they almost make you feel like this is something that I know everything about and you don't really need to know because you have me. Yeah. What we're saying is no. Mm. You need to know the basics of how this works, right. and then you'll know if what I'm saying to you makes sense. Yep. And, and I'm going to match up products and services that rich people have always had, right. the wealthy people yep. have always used, with this base information. Right. And now you're going to have a strategy that can, that can last over time. It can stand the test of time. It can be good in up markets. It can be good in down markets. It sure. can help you to pay. Any, anything you want to do, you can do because you put the right plan in place with the right person. And so that's what we've done, and, and by, by shrinking it down and boiling it down to 128 pages, yeah. with Andy's great help, making it simple and clear and fun for the first time ever. Yeah. There's, there's that part of the brain. You know, we, we, if anybody who studied neuroscience understands there's the, the prefrontal cortex, pure logic, right? right the right. middle part, the limbic system, the emotion. Ah, oh, I love you, right? Uh, but then there's the reptilian brain, the survival brain, that as soon as it sees something, the, the, frontal, the prefrontal cortex will say, that's confusing, I don't understand it. All of a sudden, it just alarms down here. You're like, nah, don't do it. Don't sign it. I don't understand it. That's why I love simplification. Yeah. Because that's what people want. They'll make decisions. Well, we describe it as financial literacy in about an hour. You know, because that's about how long it takes to read that book. That You yeah. can get the beginnings of this, that plus conversations with a financial professional, and you can be taken care of as though you were a multimillionaire. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if people, because we realize this when we're working with families, is that, you know, their kids were involved in some of the discussions. Now, I had to wait for them to leave the room. When I really got in the parents' faces, because that's something right. you, don't, you know. But I remember there were there were we we involved the kids a lot in trying to understand financial literacy. And when you just said I could read this book in an hour, I mean, imagine the ripple effect down the road that if you start sharing this content with your kids, yeah. million dollar baby style, right? Right. You know what I mean, right. I mean, just that simple concept. You know, it's it's it's, it's cool. Uh, you know, but but I, I, you don't see that a lot. And I, and I think you're absolutely right in, in your approach that when you simplify content for people. Because you know, a confused mind will never make a decision. That's been one of the biggest problems, right? And I think by simplifying them, making them focus on little chunks at a time, I think that's how people absorb content. And that's what we found in the show, that once we made them do small things, stepped them through, then they started doing it. And then you hope to build habits and momentum. Sure. Absolutely. We know what I think else for a lot of our leaders is that they, uh, as, as I mentioned in my part today, people have a contacting problem. They don't, they don't have enough people they're talking to to, to, to get the law of high numbers working for them. Mm -hmm. And by, if you were reduced just to words and just to relationships, mm -hmm. that's hard to do. It's, it's hard to have enough to turn it into a big business. But if you've got a book that you can share mm -hmm. and it's backed up by media, like this being on TV or having articles on CNBC and those kind of things, right. then you can give out, if you can give out 10 a week, you can share 10 a day. But here, here's where, it, I, I don't, I've not met your leaders, but I've seen where products like this fail. Okay, and here's me. why. Because the, if, when you, if you buy into this, you know what I mean? If they buy into the mindset of this, yeah. then you have to project that, right? Some people, I like the phrase business opportunity, but if, if there's like no passion behind it, like you really want to help somebody. This is not about making money. It's about helping people and making money, if I can tie the two right. together. Absolutely. Because if I give you value, damn it, I deserve value. So I think a lot of, I do a lot of sales training, my full-time job. And usually what I find is that people don't understand the value of what they offer. Right. I mean, really understand it. They'll go, well, yeah, we offer financial literacy and education, and it's a program that will help you get out of debt. That's what we offer. No, you don't, right? You offer more than that. In the show, we try to prove you want more than that. One, 
You're educating people. They're getting out of debt. They're probably not going to get divorced because of you. The yeah. kids are going to grow up with a family. They're going to go to a better college. You know, the ripple effect is there. And I think if, you're, if this is your program and you're not trying to grab people by the scruff of the neck, great, give them a book. But I, 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 would, I swear to you, I'll give them a book and I'll grab them by the scruff of the throat. And you listen to me. I need you to read this. This is going to help you. Damn it. That's how okay. you do it right there. Yeah. No, that's that's like exactly that. how you do it. That's yeah. game. That's Hand game. Hand the book. Grab. <laughs> the man's got game. <laughs> Something like that. You, know, but it, you, you should go to sales but, training. You'd be really good. I, I should do sales training. But you know what that's I mean? Game, they right? don't that's understand. Game. They don't understand. And they're like, they, they, they sell with alligator arms. You ever hear that phrase, selling no. with alligator arms? All right. So let's say you go to dinner. Not us, but just an example. Yeah. There's 10 people at the table. We have right. a good time. We're partying, right? All of a sudden, you know, the bill gets thrown in the middle. Right. Everybody develops alligator arms. Yeah, they can't reach the bill, right? So they sell. I wonder what was happening yeah, yeah. arms all the time. Yeah, yeah, trying trying to get, like, now I know what's happening. Pocket. Yeah, your arms get real short. And then people sell that way. They're like, I have this financial program. I think you'll like it and it'll help you. Like, yeah. You don't really? have to buy it if you don't want to. Right, yeah, yeah, you don't have to buy it's it if okay. you don't want to. It might be a lot. I, I don't know if you can afford it. That's the other thing. Want to read. It kills me in sales training how we, set, we, we try to sell people with our pocket. Do you know what we Absolutely. have in our pocket? Yeah. Yeah. Let's say you have $1,000. You're trying to sell a $5,000 product. You won't sell that $5,000 product because you believe you can't afford it, so why can't he right. or she? Yeah. And I'm realizing you're missing the point. Yeah. You know, you're, we're selling, you know, that, that pure value. And, and if they don't sell like that, you know, you're going to hate me for this, but just drop out of the program now. Stop wasting your time. If you're not going to sell it with passion, if you don't understand the value, you shouldn't be selling this. This is to help people. Sorry. I let, agree. Let, let that's, it be that's, written. That's, that's, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah, just because it's like it's, you guys are putting in a lot of time and effort to create all this stuff. Anybody who knows marketing, anybody who knows putting a business plan together and all this stuff together, the videos and everything, this is a lot of money. It's a lot of resources and a lot of tools, and if you're not taking advantage of it, just leave. Just go. Just go somewhere else. Quit. Sorry. This is why you needed a bodyguard. Right this here. is why. See, I this, yeah, this is what I've been trying to tell you over the years. You don't this want to come to my sales yeah. training program. I'll make you quit sales. Yeah, it's hard. Why well, tell, well, tell, tell people? I tell people. I had I had a person say this to me. She goes, "Well, Victor, I said, you know, I just want to talk." After I did my training, she goes, "I just want to talk to you on the side about sales." I go, "What is it?" She goes, "Well, right here, you know, it's a good company, but they don't have a good compensation plan." You know, what should I do? And I'm like, well, uh -oh. did you? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Coming. Wrong person to ask. I said, you have two options. Walk into the one, tiger's den. I said, one, I said, you can talk to your boss about a better compensation plan. She goes, I did that. Just like that, I did that. I said, well, two is the obvious option. Quit. Right, you Find yourself else. a better company who appreciates what you're doing. Because yeah. if you're good at selling, you'll always have a job. You will. You'll always have a job. So I ask you, are you good at sales? If you're good at sales, quit now. And we were during the lunch break, right? I'm like, quit now, just walk out, just leave if you're that good. <laughs> she was there for the second half. No, yeah, she didn't go right, anywhere. Right. But it, it's, it's like you can complain about the system, you can scream at the world, you can you know, you know, point your fit at the sky, but if somebody doesn't value you, which is why you have this E to E program, right? Right. Because in corporate, I've been there, man. I get the I get the three percent raise. Really? That just basically yeah. matches what the inflation rate right. was, baby, right? And I realized. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with working in a company. I know people who are happy working in a company. Sure. But at the same time, don't complain about the pay. Do not complain about the pay if you work for somebody else. You have no control over your money. You've given up that right. And I think that's, that's, is that too hard? I don't think so. Cause, cause it's, it's, hard, like, it's critical thinking, I think. It is, it is. I mean, it, how do you argue with that? Well, I have people who say, it's I wish... Milton Friedman. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Still, yeah. Quit, yeah. quit. Yeah. And people but, are like, yeah. I don't know if I can quit. Uh, well, you're in your own like, case Like, do it now. or don't do it. Yeah. But don't play the middle. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know? there's, there's, you know, there, there's a phrase I like, and, you know, you can delete this or bleep this later. You know, there's ask holes. People who ask you for advice and never take it. And they just keep coming back the next week. Yeah. And say, what should I do? They keep asking you. And I'm like, and, and you get to a point where you're like, take action. Right. You're not going to get out of this without taking some time of action. And so sure. I get frustrated when I see that in sales. I see it a lot because people complain. You know, Victor, it's about the product. You know, that company always has a better product. One of the things I learned in selling when I was when I was managing a sales team is I would remove all barriers to sales. I had salespeople say, well, "Victor, my car allowance isn't good enough." I said, "What do you think it should be?" And I remember at that time it was like 250. I said, "I think it should be around 350." Done. What else do you need? He goes, well, <laughs> yeah. he said, it'd be nice to have a nice computer. Done. Done. What else what do you else need? You got, yeah. What else do you got? <laughs> and then at, after like three or four items, I go, is there anything else you need? He goes, I remember he goes, no, I think that's it. I said, all right, my turn. 
Yeah. Let me tell you what I need. I'm giving you everything you not need. If by the end of the quarter I don't have my number, see improvements in my number, these things won't matter to you. Do we understand each other? And that may sound hard, but if you're going to ask me for something, then this is quid pro quo. Right. And, and by the way, it doesn't mean I fired everybody. Right. You know, right. I worked with salespeople to help them, but I just remember one of the greatest lessons is remove all the excuses and there they stand naked, so to speak. Right. Can you do what you're going to do? Right. You know, because a lot of people probably take this program, if I can just talk to some of those. Sure. And they'll take the program and then they'll come up with all kinds of reasons why it doesn't work. Not that they're, because I don't, look. Who doesn't need financial help in the U.S.? I just said 75% of Americans live in paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. I don't know. I call that a market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I call that a, a market. Out there I think you have around, a market. You know, so yeah. if, you don't, if you say you don't have enough prospect or leads, you're the problem. You're not pushing it. You're not selling it. You're not getting out there. Absolutely. So true. Well, gosh, this, this is will probably be the last time strong. I'm on this show. No. <laughs> but it was no. good. We love it. I, I did you wanna... talk the truth, Matt. So I've always loved your stuff. You, you tell it like it is. Well, I did want to ask you one favor. We, yes, we have a lot of leaders in Puerto Rico. That's uh. one of our big places. So say hey to all your, your old, the original homies. Bueno, saludos a la mi gente de Puerto Rico, mi familia de Barranquita, si hay bonito. Cuando vaya a Puerto Rico, el yunque es mi sitio favorito, pasteles a capurias y la bandera a la gloria. Bendiciones. Now, before we go, tell, you've got this great online training program for salespeople. It's, like, ridiculously cheap. Talk about that for a second because that is a great sales program. Thank you. So it's called the Sales Velocity Academy. So if you go to salesvelocityacademy.com. Salesvelocityacademy. Salesvelocityacademy.com. Okay. Okay. So I have over 50 courses in there. I think we have over 500 videos in there. And so if you're struggling with sales, uh, some of the programs in there, as Steve mentioned, because he's seen my stuff, it's, I cut to the bone real quick. So it's you're the not, best of the best. Yeah, I'm not going to sit there and just say, okay, today's sales training is all about how do you feel about yourself? You know, I'm not doing that to you, okay? <laughs> I'm going to go show you how to sell, close a deal, make money. Yeah. But keep in mind, I always believe we never manipulate we never try to persuade. We just show value in its right light, and people will give you value in return. So Sales Velocity Academy, check it out. And what does that cost for that? Twenty nine ninety nine a month. Yeah. Or 30 three, bucks a month. 30 bucks a month at 300 bucks a year, yeah. and you'll get that back in less than a sale. Yeah, it's really good yeah. stuff. And you get a coach, which is what everybody yeah. needs. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. Yep. And yeah. so we do webinars also. So all the webinars I do that are free are actually put on the platform so they get access to all that. Prices don't go up. Cancel any time. But it's a really good program because I think sales – is the skill. Right. It is it the is a, skill in yeah. business. You know, you look at any business owner, they'll tell you, take my accounting people, take my marketing people, take that, take that, but leave me my sales people. With my sales people, <laughs> yeah. I will rebuild, right? Yeah, and right. I'll hire exactly. everybody back. So sales exactly. is something you have to learn. Absolutely. Well, Victor, elbow bump, man. Boom. Thank you so much. Long Finally distance. Guys, oh, appreciate it. You're awesome, man, as always. You're awesome. Thank you. Well, you guys, we appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully, you got a lot out of this. I would strongly, again, recommend check out um, Sales Velocity. I always forget the name of it. Sales Velocity it. Academy. Okay, SalesVelocityAcademy.com. Check it out. He's the best out there. So good. Tough love, tough love. But, man, that's it's a tough world, you know?